Welcome to Dance Vision Live out of my living room. Welcome home to Los Angeles. And um, we tried to make a cute studio out of it. So now that's our workplace for um, hopefully not too long. Um, but you know, I get used to it. Everything is fine. Everything is good. We're rocking and rolling. And I hope you are staying safe too. And I'm really happy you're joining me this afternoon actually. Um, and um, today I would like to talk about connection. Um, that's really a topic that's on my heart. I see that a lot when I'm out there judging. And um, I also teach it a lot because I feel, um, you know, this is where a lot of things can get improved. And I also feel that there's a lot of misunderstanding out there when it comes to connection. So um, the first thing that people think or that comes to mind when people hear the word connection is always partnering. Everybody jumps on, okay, connection has to do with lead and follow. They immediately look at the other person or um, look for connection with another person. But I want to wheel that back a little bit and, and start with actually connecting to yourself. Um, you know, connection is kind of like in life in a way because, you know, we're all told we should look for happiness inside and not in other people. It's kind of a little bit similar like this in the dancing too. If, if I'm not connected within myself, if I'm not on balance myself, if I can't control what I'm doing myself, I'm going to have a really hard time connecting to another person because in the end then the other person will have to catch me every time I, I lose my balance, my control, my connection to myself and then it becomes a miscommunication and you know then it becomes just not as good as it could be um, you know so um, when when I'm explaining what people need to practice for me I'm I'm actually telling people there's four things that can be practiced and I, I would like to take that actually separately um, because otherwise everything just muddles one into the other and again gets very confusing. Um, the first thing would be, let's talk about just steps and choreography. You can just practice steps and choreography, um, that's one section. One section is to practice everything that pertains to you yourself as a dancer. Like your own footwork, um, your own connectivity within your, within your body, uh, you, your own, you, even your own fitness, your own, your own strength, what, you know, your ability, your physical ability that you do, everything that is about you that has nothing to do with another partner falls underneath this chapter. And then, um, obviously we have this big chapter of partnering. Now we're getting into what are we going to do together and what can we create together because we can do a lot of things by ourselves but the beautiful thing of ballroom dancing and that's also why I love it so much. I, I, just, I just love connection and what we can create together because we can be um, bigger than ourselves, faster than ourselves, um, we can um, create emotions together, we can create beautiful, beautiful things um, if we know how to work together in partnering. Um, and then obviously the last but not least section that people can practice or that we can teach is we can teach anything that has to do with art. Art expressions, um, musicality, everything that uh, you know makes the heart open up and that makes it worthwhile watching because uh, we all would like to be captivated uh, by the dancing, we all would like to um, feel with you, um, be moved, you know, by your dancing and that would be emotions and um, the artistry of it, the art of it. So that's basically my four big chapters um, that I can, you know, go into when I'm teaching or that I can tell you, um, you need to practice. But let's first start, let's wheel back because everybody is going right away into, oh, this is going to be about partnering. Eventually it will be, but let's first talk about connectivity in ourselves, okay? So in order to understand how to connect our own body, let's understand what we actually need to do when we are ballroom dancing. Our job is to move, to transfer our weight from foot to foot, yeah? So now... That can be done in different means, but you know, to, to do that beautifully and coordinated, we need to find a way to move coordinated as a whole body, 
okay? We cannot, if, if we do that uncoordinated or at separate timings in the body, it starts to look funny, it, it starts to look uncoordinated, okay? And then it looks off and something's wrong with it. So in order to make this right and give you a beautiful movement, let's look in how we're gonna connect ourselves. So the first thing that we need to explore is, um, I wanna ask you, do you know what your gravity center is or where your gravity center is? So basically your gravity center, um, it would mean that we need to find that point in your body where if we would just, you know, have one string we can suspend you from, you would be in an absolute equilibrium. So kind of like a, a children's mobile, you know, that, that hang from the ceiling with all the toys on it. So we want to just put you in balance on one string. So to find that we have, we would have to kind of cut you up in, in, in equal portions to find the center. So let's imagine we're going to cut down one time the middle line. Yeah. So here would be my middle line and we're going to cut, then we would have half. Now that, that would be my vertical, my horizontal, we would have to cut about here, which is about two fingers or two centimeters lower than my belly button. Okay, so we have already two lines that are meeting here, a vertical and a horizontal and we're finding that space that's two fingers underneath the belly button. Now we're also three-dimensional. So since we're three-dimensional, if we, if we look at ourselves from the side, we would have to cut down the side and the side is actually quite far back. So if I, if I find my half at the side, it's actually here right in front of my spine. It feels quite far back. So if I connect all these dots and I go, you know, from my vertical, my horizontal and from the side, I find one point um, that is sitting right in front of my spine, deep here in my, in my center. And that's my gravity center. So what I personally imagine is I imagine there's like a little pebble, pearl um, inside, like something that I can visualize that I have to transport. So when you look at me, hello Coco, my doggy is here too. Uh, okay, so if, if I want to transfer my gravity center, I can put this in front over the ball of the foot or back to the heel. You see there's already quite a bit of movement in my body without me doing a step, okay? On the other hand, I can also freely move my feet and arms without affecting my gravity center at all. None of it, okay? So now that we know what the gravity center is and what it can do, let's go a little bit further in the body. So I like to imagine my body um, from the bones outwards. So I'm not thinking about muscles and ligaments first. I'm thinking about bones when I'm dancing and I'm aligning my skeleton and my, my, my bone structure. Um, in order to move, we cannot really um, become too muscular because if we use all the muscles to move, then we're actually restricting movement or it looks produced. It just doesn't look natural and it doesn't look easy. And, um, you know, in the end, we, we would like to look so it's effortless. Um, so that gravity center is, is really something that I personally feel needs to hang freely. So if that doesn't hang freely and, and can't respond to any kind of direction or whatever is going on, um, you know, then, then I restrict my movement already, then I'm becoming stiff. So I would like to think about that gravity center, about something that's very responsive and that's hanging freely. So now I have to think about, when you think about the body, yeah? So you have quite a bit of bone structure around your hips here. There's like lots of bones that keeps everything together. And then you have a rib cage, which is again a lot of bones that keeps everything together. But there is a big part here in the middle between my hips and between my rib cage that has only one set of bones in the back, which is the spine. And that's that thin little thing, you know. So you, there's so many um, muscles and, um, you know, soft material inside the body. Um, this is where a lot of things go haywire, you know. So this is where my upper body gets very easily disconnected from what my gravity center is doing. And um, you know, since we have to move as a unit and since we have to try and move um, you know, our body forward, backward to each side um, at once and not in pieces, we have to now find a way how we can connect our gravity center 
and, and our top, our, our whole ribcage part. And this is one part where I think there we have to work the most, or I actually feel I have to work for that a lot. That's, imagine where your sternum is, okay? Here's your sternum. Um, it's the center of levitation. So this has to be lifted up at all times, okay? So um, I hear a lot of things that like you have to suck your belly in, you have to lace up. For me, it doesn't work because all that happens is I tense my belly muscles and then, you know, I restrict my movement again and, and, and I don't want to do that. What works for me is if I take my sternum, my center of levitation, and I'm going to lift it up. I've heard the expression of, you know, saying, people saying that it's like your, it's like an energy button on the back that you can press, you know, and you get activated, you get active. For me, it's just aligning your um, your, your rib cage really over your gravity center and then eventually your gravity center, we haven't gone that far yet, um, over the ball of the foot. So when you look at, at it from the side and you know, I always like to come back to explain things from what we do in real life because then um, it's a little bit more understandable. In real life, when we stand comfortable, many, many times we just want to take that sternum and let it sink down onto our bellies. This is what we do oh, and then we feel comfortable. A lot of people have, have actually lost a lot of flexibility because if you don't create space here in your, um, in your center of levitation and have this ability to expand it and to stretch it, um, this is where you just lose ability to move and you, um, then it's difficult to balance yourself too because uh, you know you can't reach, you can't really reach where you would like to go. So it's very important that we practice that in daily life and that's going to be your homework. I want you to actually notice, just notice it. When you are out there and when you are um, you know, doing what you're doing, when you're sitting at your desk, when you're going grocery shopping, just notice what, what your habits are, what your body naturally wants to do. And, and catch yourself when that happens that your sternum is just sinking down. You see what happens is my shoulders go round, my elbows come out. It doesn't look very flattering, but besides that it doesn't look very flattering, it also doesn't really help with the dancing. So the, the big work we all will have to do in order to connect within ourselves is we have to lift our center of levitation. We're going to have to lift it up. And I don't say lift it through, we don't want to arch it through, this is pushing it forward. I simply want to lift it up, just up. So now what happens is that we elongated our um, belly and our, on our back. Um, our spine is now long, okay? All these little vertebrae between each other, they're actually elevated. So, you know, I have this beautiful long spine. And actually what happens too is like my, my, my rib cage, I can see also my heart goes over my hips and my hips go over my ball of the foot, okay? So you already see what's happening from here to here. It's like my heart goes over the hips, my hips go over the ball of the foot, and here I am, okay? So this way, if we keep this um, center of levitation up, and if we keep this over the foot, once we're moving from one foot to the next, we just have to put the work in into the feet and our footwork, okay? And our feet will transport us like a conveyor belt um, as a whole unit from foot to foot. And therefore we will be connected. We will be connected into the ground because now we need the feet to transport us. We will have a beautiful, responsive gravity center that is ready to connect to a partner that is not, um, you know, we, we don't use muscles that we don't need. We have a beautiful, beautiful long spine. So this only this one work is already helping us to make a beautiful, beautiful long spine. And we are already in a much better shape um, to transport ourselves, to be in balance, and then eventually also to connect to our partner. So, so I hope that was a, a, a little bit of a um, hopefully simple explanation um, without much to get too technical or too scientific. Um, with how you can imagine that and what you can maybe use in order to connect to yourself. We have a little bit of knowledge now, we have a little bit of verbiage. So um, let's talk about the next section, let's talk about shoulders and arms, okay? So when we are dancing, 
obviously in daily life I want you I want you to notice too we do a lot of things with our shoulders and arms you know sometimes when I see people who who work like for example in surgery and they and they they do things with their hands they they have a lot of tensions in their shoulders there's a lot of things going on up here because you know also when we go to the to the gym we lift things with arms and then we don't even notice how we tense up our neck muscles and how we actually restrict movement there when we are dancing from here to here we actually want to look effortless we want to have a beautiful long neckline um, and you know our arms want to be flowing and 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 also like work with our body and be connected so again where I want to refer to is gravity center center of levitation so I want to show you what if I use that center of levitation correctly what that actually does to my shoulders and to my arms I really don't want to say what I don't like is if if I say you know push your shoulders down because if you say push your shoulders down then I'm again I'm using muscles I don't like to use muscles I'm, I already can't move and it's already straining okay so um, rather than pushing muscles down in the back what about um, thinking about our center of levitation and by lifting this up what will happen to you um, you know these muscles underneath your armpits I personally call them ticklish muscles um, it's the lats I think um, so for me that's the ticklish muscles so um, that's what really needs to engage and get active and be activated so that actually my arms will connect to my body okay and the, the way arms connect in the body the way I feel it it's like it feels like a triangle that connects the gravity center again so when you look dancers who are, who are dancing really well you see this beautiful engaged back yeah so this beautiful engaged back also comes from if you lift up your center of levitation you will feel that automatically your shoulders will roll back your lat muscles your ticklish muscles will get engaged and you will feel this beautiful connection down here into kind of where um, I think where the kidneys are you know back here um, you will feel engaged there and you will feel that your back is actually starting to move from back here just by lifting this forward and up you will feel that your back is actually starting to engage and starting to move because a lot of us think about you know we're very aware of the front of the body we're not really aware of the back of the body you know so just to make it very simple I'm again I'm not using technical terms I'm using my Bab English terms and I do that purposefully because um, I feel it makes a bigger impact in the in the head me I, I forget the technical terms terms right away I much rather like something that I can relate to personally like that's alive for me so ticklish muscles make sense to me and um, down here the kidneys make sense to me too and this is how I can engage to move my back so now I've already engaged my arms and my shoulder girdle okay what also will happen by lifting the sternum up not also will my shoulders roll back into place but also what you will notice is that your elbows actually start to turn down okay so if I if I if I drop my sternum my shoulders roll forward and my elbows will roll forward as well like this if I lift my sternum up my shoulders will roll back and down and also my elbows will roll back and down okay and this is another big thing that I would like to explain um, that connects us to ourselves, and then eventually also we need that to connect to our partner our elbows are actually quite important okay because a lot of things go haywire there when we connect um, I personally feel if I use my arms to dance I use my elbows actually a lot you know the fingers and um, that's just an extension that flows with it I can use it for express expressions I can use it for musicality um, but it's really my elbows that give the direction and the response and it goes from the elbows into my back and then it responds also to my gravity center and to the rotational movement that I'm doing in my body so my elbows actually the way I feel them um, you know you see a lot of people when they're dancing they're having their elbows slightly behind their body and then you get this 
uh, you know, T-Rex arms or chicken arms. So elbows actually need to connect right in front of your body. It's like it's if you have little elastic bands that connect to your gravity center here. They're always responding to what your gravity center is doing. They're always responding to what your gravity center is doing. They're not just doing something by themselves. Um, okay, so now we are we're already getting into going towards the direction of explaining how that works when we actually start to connect to each other. So I know it, uh, there's a lot to explain. So um, imagine um, when you, the position of your arm, when you want to say hello to somebody, yeah? If you want to say hello to somebody and you reach out your hand, you're going to do this here naturally, yeah? This is hello, and then, you know, now there is nobody there, but, you know, if somebody would be there, um, it would be about here that we would connect with each other and say hello. Now, um, if you have somebody that you can partner with right now, try it out. Um, if you don't have anybody, um, try it out when that whole thing is over, when we can shake hands again, whatever we're not missing out right now. I, I actually am a hugging person, so I miss connection. Um, so um, just imagine there's somebody and we're giving them the hand. Um, when we're connecting, we're not saying hello up here. We're not, you know, saying hello out there, you know. Usually when we say hello, it's like our elbow, notice it, it's right in front of our gravity center, naturally so. This is what we do all the time and I want you to notice it, yeah? So when we're saying hello, um, our, our elbow is right in front of the gravity center and our arm is usually also like just extending forward at the height of our gravity center. And I want you to notice how our elbow is actually turned down, it's not squeezed in but it also doesn't stick up, down, stick out. It's just hanging straight in front, boom. And then it's the forearm length that goes out and connects to your partner or to the person you wanna say hello, okay? So then when you say hello to that person, if I just stay like that, um, you know, you have three ways how you can say hello. Um, I'm gonna show you that from the side because then it makes more sense. I'm sorry I don't have anybody with me today, um, I'm trying to explain it with words as much as I can. So if I'm saying hello and I want, I'm very formal and we don't know each other, maybe this is a very professional or official situation, then usually we're gonna stay put, we're just gonna like take the hand and we're just gonna stay there and, 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 and take that hand and that is it, but we don't put any body weight or anything into it. That would be more formal handshake. If we really dislike somebody, we almost lean back, our weight is going to go towards the back of the foot and then it, it feels really kind of standoffish, like hello, but not really friendly. If we actually want to connect and be friendly with somebody, what we naturally do is we naturally lean our gravity center a little bit into it. We lean our gravity center towards that other person. So the other person does it too and then we actually, it, it gives you a feeling like it's, it's a warm and fuzzy feeling, like it's a trusting feeling. It feels very friendly and it feels very connected to the other person. So this is an exercise I want you guys to do. Um, if you have somebody that you can shake hands with, um, try you to notice you know, how your elbow is in front of your gravity center, how there's like a forearm's length and how you can just by leaning back a little bit, this would be a little standoffish, if you're just staying in the middle and don't engage or do anything, it feels very formal, but if you lean into it towards that person, you know, if you lean into it towards that person, here you see I, I lean my gravity center into it, I lift my sternum up. This is how we actually feel the other person and how we feel a connection. And this is really much like what happens when we connect in dancing. The connection is there because we cannot talk to each other in words. We have to feel, we have to go away from seeing and, 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 and talking and in our brains into all, in, into all our feeling and, and into, into our instincts. So when we're actually connecting, it's leaning a little bit into with my gravity center. And you see then automatically because you already know from your technique books that you're really supposed to be um, towards the ball of the foot, 
Yeah, the heel is still touching, but also it has a function. The heel is, you can lift up the heel quite easily because, you know, if you want to change direction, you need to be able to whoop, switch that heel around. If you have your weight back here, which means also in my terms, you would be not connected. You would be quite standoffish if we would say hello to each other. You have no means, you, you're stuck on the foot, you know. You have to bring your weight over the ball of the foot that you easily can change direction uh, no matter what comes up. Um, you know, when we're moving, we're changing direction pretty much constantly. Um, it's, it, there's a difference between a static balance and a moving, moving balance, so not today. Um, but, but I want you guys to notice that, yeah? So now when we are connecting to each other, uh, and let's start the, a little bit of, the, of that second chapter there. Um, I've talked a lot right now about creating a little bit of understanding how to connect to yourself, how to be able to, um, you, you know, use your body um, in a way that one thing results into the other. So things are actually starting to happen rather than I have to produce everything separately. That's not only wasting energy. To be coordinated also means to use things most efficiently. I don't want to spend my energy for anything that I don't need, especially if it comes down to the really high levels of dancing. If you're using your energy for things you don't need, you, you're missing out. You're missing out or you're looking busy. You know, there's something off. Um, like when you, when you are efficient and you really know what you're doing, the movement becomes very precise and very clear and very clean. And in the end, that's what you would like to do. That's, you know, what people can see. And it, it, it also feels different. It feels good. Um, so again, my sense of levitation, that's my favorite thing there. So now when we connect to another person, um, you know, obviously we, our, our arms become our lifeline because our, our, our gravity centers, our spines have to communicate with each other. Our spines can give us the information where we are, towards each other or away from each other. Um, and when I'm connecting, there's many, many, many different little um, joints and bones in my fingers and in my hands. What I really would like to do is like I want to connect my, my wrists, that's where it starts. So me personally, I'm not a big fan of any connections that are just coming from the fingers for the reason that, uh, you know, we, we really have too much, it's too loose. We cannot quickly switch dynamics. We cannot quickly switch directions. We cannot communicate our gravity center precisely if we just use our fingers and not, not really our, our wrists. So the way I want to connect, like the, the person who's following, okay? I, um, me personally, I just put my hands down so as if I would play the piano, like as if I would, um, you know, make a little roof, a little house there with my fingers. And then the other person, like the, the leader, um, I, I prefer if he takes it from the outside here, takes my hand and then takes the thumb up top so my wrist is actually safe and secure, yeah? So now what we have here, yeah? And I can still, I can move my fingers, that's not stiff, it's not so that I can't use it, but I don't grab, yeah? I will never grab, as a follower, I will never grab the person who's leading because otherwise I'm already restricting him and his freedom to lead. I will entrust him my arm and I will entrust him my gravity center so um, he, she um, will know uh, where we are, like we give that piece of in information. If I grab it, I already restrict it, okay? And then from the outside, I would like to have, um, you know, the fingers closed. If the fingers are open or anything there, I also, I feel quite insecure. I feel like this can slip away in a fraction of a second. I like a nice warm hold and I like so, a, a good connection between each other like this, okay? So now, um, there's two ways we can connect to each other. The first way I've already explained to you guys, basically my gravity center and then secondarily my sternum, which is lifted up. I want to put this towards the ball of my foot. And then what will happen is that the other person will actually feel and get that information about where our gravity center is. And their job is going to be to redirect me. Okay. So, um, uh, the person who's leading 
the job is gonna be to give me my timing and my direction okay what I will do I will always search for this warm connection I'm calling it about being friendly my job as a follower is I'm trying to search and be active and never ever lose even like a millimeter of my of my sternum the minute that sinks down even a millimeter I'm already not there I'm already not giving that information so I'm, I'm trying to keep my sternum lifted and I will give just by doing what I'm supposed to do automatically I will give that information to my partner my partner will do the same thing and now just by my hand being placed in different directions I will get that information so he is um, responsible for giving me timing and direction so I allow him and it's an allowing thing I allow my partner to redirect me so there is a second thing that we need about connections like uh, you know you probably heard that word about a push and a pull connection it's another way of saying things so what we just tried to explore that would be what other people also refer to a push connection um, push sounds a little bit from the arm for me so um, I don't for me I like the word connection better so for me that works because I really just want to connect that means give information about my gravity center to the other person now if we do only that our dancing will be rather flat and we are also not able to create body rhythms so now we need a second way to connect yeah the second way to connect would be called a frame and that's also referred as what's called a pull connection again not my favorite word I like the word frame um, obviously it didn't come from me I've learned it um, but I, I really like that idea so what a frame really means is that if you can take your gravity center and you can send it forward over the foot and you can have your attention forward towards the other partner and have this friendly feeling to that person you then can also do the opposite you can put your gravity center or like the, um, the focus of your gravity center into your back kind of as if somebody takes your, your, your trousers and pulls you back boom. yeah like this like boom now my my center my gravity center that little pearl that's sitting there is actually connecting boom, to the back yeah to the back of my uh, of my spine it can connect forward to my partner or in the back away it does not mean that I'm gonna move yeah it does not mean that I'm gonna start swaying and waving here it doesn't give me any big effect here with my head or anything there's this like you know this typical saying is like um, you know if you imagine a big palm tree and a palm tree is waving in the wind that's what we want to avoid so what we want to avoid is the head weight doing that yeah so this is see what happens if I would do that with my head weight that's no good I want to do that information I want to transfer that really only with my gravity center I want to connect in the front or I want to take it away in the back what you will feel here in your arm is you, you will either feel that warm and fuzzy feeling like towards each other like we're connecting like when we say hello to each other or if you will take it away you will feel the opposite you will feel a pull kind of um, you know if, if we're getting pulled along so we can go towards or we can connect backwards um, I hope you can see that there correctly because those are very fine movements I'm trying to explain but if I if I would take my my hands here you can see I can put my attention forward or backward I can put it forward or backward and with this information I can create either a connection or, or a frame a connection or a frame so while I use a connection anytime I'm getting the information of keeping to move backwards yeah so if I'm moving backwards I will use a frame uh, a, a, a connection to my partner kind of like you know I'm getting pushed um, again not my favorite word pushed so but I'm getting redirected or I'm getting freely being allowed to move backwards when I'm actually moving forward this is when I use my frame connection I'm actually looking for that information in a frame yeah I'm not trying to go forward and, and push it along I'm trying to stay in the frame 
when I'm when I'm moving forward. So those are the two big connections that I'm using um, when I'm actually when I'm with my partner. And um, let's not go into any standard or anything. This is what I know from Latin, but uh, I feel it's very helpful for any Latin dancers, for rhythm dancers. And I also have to say, I use this information quite a bit for smooth um, because uh, there is so many parts when we actually, um, when we're partnering each other and we can use it. Um, and I see in smooth a lot of times that the connections are very, very high up and the arms are very, very, very long when we actually could, you know, if we would bring our elbows down a little bit, if we have a little bit of knowledge with what is a connection and a frame, we could create a lot of three-dimensional movements that would be quite dynamic and quite exciting. And I think that would be something we could think about and that maybe would give us some ideas how we could enhance our dancing. Um, at least in my mind, it sparks a lot of ideas. So, um, yeah, having had a connection, having had a frame right now, um, yeah, like a little bit about the direction. Um, when I'm a follower and if I'm, you know, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm dancing, I never ever stop moving. I always keep going. I'm always keeping transporting my gravity center and I'm keeping what is called active. And this is also just a little thing I want to give you towards the end right now. Um, it's about um, what does it mean to be active in your center and what does it mean you will hear sometimes okay you're not moving you're not doing anything or you're you're like um, you know you're, you're inactive or whatever it is okay and what it means I have found out over many many years of trial and error of what, what it means for me is you know I've, I've talked before about this area in your body which is in between your hips and um, where the rib cage is, the core of the body. This is where all the soft tissues are, which is great for creating rhythms and activities, but also big danger when it comes down to, you know, disconnecting, being discombobulated, losing, um, losing connection to yourself. And also one big thing is about not using it at all, um, which is, you know, basically like very flat or plain. And, one thing that has really struck with me when explanation is um, it's about the consistency that we have in those parts that are actually you know, squishy, you know, that are, that, that are not bones. Like what consistency do we need in order to keep moving and to keep transporting and create those rhythms? And I want to give you the idea, can you imagine a raw egg? The consistency inside, like a raw egg, yeah? So imagine it's glibberish, it's, it's, it's fluid, and then can you imagine a hard-boiled egg? A hard-boiled egg is not really hard, it's actually quite, um, it, it's soft, but it has like a denser consistency. So it's dense, but soft, but elastic, there's a lot of elasticity. So while, um, when you spin those two eggs, I want you to try that out at home. When you spin those two eggs, you will see that the egg that is raw goes rather slow because all these like, um, you know, um, fluid things inside slow the momentum and the movement down. When you spin a, a, an egg that's actually hard boiled, it's spinning quite fast and pretty precise. And, you know, if you translate the idea of the egg that's hard boiled, this el elasticity into these parts of your body between your gravity center and your sternum, you pretty much have a, a good consistency so that you're very active and very responsive and can actually give your partner quite an activity before you even start to move here. So another thing that I try to explain it with, and it's again my own, um, my own terms, I like to imagine that, uh, you know, I, that there's like my, my whole um, belly basically is filled with pebbles or marbles. And um, you know, when you have a, a, a mason jar full of pebbles or marbles, if you would grab in there and you would mix them around, it would be quite, you would have to use a little bit of strength and a little bit of like resistance to move them all around. So if I t translate that, and I feel like I'm moving 
like marbles, like a mason jar of marbles around here, then I'm getting this consistency I really need in order to be active enough in my body to then actually connect to my partner. And what it also does, it, for some reason, it gives you an energy. If you start to have this consistency in your center, in your, cent uh, in your, in your, um, in your torso, and then put this information together about connecting to yourself, being aware of your gravity center, lifting up your sternum, getting your, your, um, um, your core activated, you know, you're already in a, in a very good spot, you're very active, and now you can actually be very aware and very focused to connect to your partner, and your partner will feel that and when you are a leader, you will actually feel, oh, there is somebody there, there is something. It will entice you to even dance and to, to move differently because you actually have a partner that you can feel. And that's very exciting. That's something very beautiful. You have somebody you can feel and that you can create rhythms with. Because once we're switching away, you will constantly switch between a connection and a frame connection and a connection and a frame connection. It's like a little rhythm box that happens between you guys. And that is really something exciting and something that is um, worthwhile exploring and that is, um, you know, making a big difference in your, in your dancing, um, how you can create these rhythms together, how you can create dynamics together. And uh, it, it makes the whole thing really beautiful. Um, so, um, yeah, I think that was my take on connection. Um, I hope it gave you one or the other idea that you can maybe implement into your dancing. And uh, maybe it gave you a, a different kind of explanation. You know, we, um, I feel so many of us dancers, it's, it's, it's all the same source, you know. It's all the same knowledge and we all have, uh, you know, so much experience. And then we say it with different words. And, um, you know, one says it like that and for one person goes, oh, now I get it. And one person says it like that and, oh, now I get it. But I feel we're all sitting in a big universe and we all have the same love for dancing. And we all just use our, um, a little bit of a different words to say it. Um, so hopefully my words were a little bit helpful for you. And, um, you know, for me, that's an exciting subject. And I'm really looking forward to see many of you guys out there dancing and um, very, very soon. And I, I'm really looking forward to see you guys in person and to connect with you guys. In the meantime, connect, uh, let's connect through the living rooms, let's connect through the computers, um, through the camera. And I also wanted to say thank you to the whole Dance Vision team for allowing me to do this, for inviting me. Um, I had a great time. I was very happy to share some of my uh, beliefs with you and, um, yeah, um, thank you so much. Have a great day. See you guys soon. And much love from me. Stay safe. Mwah!